Hello everyone, I hope all of you are doing good and today I am here with a video on electric current and its effects, class 7 science. So this is Roshni from Learno Hub, the free learning platform where you can learn anything about math, science, English grammar, tips and tricks absolutely for free at learnohub.com. As you enter inside a dark room, you switch on the light and the room is well lit. In a hot sunny afternoon, as you enter inside your room, you are sweating. You switch on the fan and there you are. Now, what, what is that magic that happens that just with a switch on, you're able to lit the room, you're able to switch on the fan. Now, this magic is possible because of electric current, because electric current flows through the wires inside your house. So in this lesson, we are going to learn about electric current. We will see what is electric current, who carries the electric current and in what direction. So that's our agenda for today in this video. So let's get started. So as I mentioned, switching on the bulb, the bulb glows. Now do you know what happens when we switch it on? When we switch it on, basically current flows through a circuit. And due to the flow of current, the bulb glows. So now we will understand all these things in more detail. We will draw some diagrams. We will see how exactly the entire circuit is made up of. But this is one place. This is one instance where electricity plays an important role. Think of this situation where you have an open so socket carrying current. And if by mistake you try to go near it or you touch it, what happens? You experience an electric shock. So why do you experience an electric shock? Due to electric current. Similarly, you think of devices like the camera, the battery, one of the most uh, important examples. So do you know how batteries work? So you would have seen a lot of devices starting from torches to computers to your cell phones and all of them have a cell or a battery inside them. So these batteries, in, what do they do? They generate electric current, they produce electricity. So they have a setup inside due to which electricity gets generated. So they generate electric current. So batteries are very important stuff. And, and in a way, batteries have brought about a revolution in the modern technology. You think of your computers, you think of the normal things at your home like the fan. Fan, when, why, when you switch it on, it starts, it, it gets on. The fan moves, that's because of the current flowing through it. You think of the television, the transistor, the mobile phones. So all of them make use of things where electric current plays an important role. Think of your refrigerator. So when there is a power cut, your ref is the refrigerator still on? No. So only when there is power, your refrigerator is on. So electric current has to flow even inside the circuit of a refrigerator. So now let's look at a very common scenario. What could happen if by mistake you touch a wire which is naked and which is carrying current. So the wire is not covered or it is not, you know, like uh, it is coated with some other material. It is just a naked wire which is carrying current. Now what can ha happen if you try to touch it? It can be extremely dangerous. Obviously you will experience electric shock and sometimes the shock can be so much severe that it can even turn fatal. So it's very dangerous. Similarly, I'm very sure if you have ever been to the railway platforms, you would have seen birds sitting on wires, the telephone wires and the birds sitting over it. So a very common scene, uh, which is seen from the railway stations and platforms is that sometimes these birds, they are seen dead on the lines. Now, do you know why? Because of the electric shock that they experience. Now, whether you talk about touching the naked wire or you talk about these birds sitting on the um, wires carrying current. So the, it, they are dangerous because they can give electric shock and this electric shock is due to the electric current which is flowing through the wire. Now the electric shock can become very dangerous and it can even kill an organism. So here also you see that electric current is a very important thing. 
So now we are all set to know what is electric current because that's what we have been talking about since long. I have been giving you examples showing where do we see electric current flow. So let's understand what is electric current. It is the same electric current which makes the tube light on, which makes the fan start when you switch it on. So electric current is nothing but flow of electric charge. Now the question is what do we mean by electric charge? What are electric charges? So these electric charges are nothing but they are particles and the particles are negatively charged and these negatively charged particles are termed as electrons. So basically the movement of these electrons result in electric current. So how better can we understand this? So in order to understand this concept, let us assume that electrons are nothing but they are like balls, they are like particles. So we can see that electric current is measured as the rate of flow of charge. So as I said, charge are nothing but electrons and these electrons can be assumed as particles. So the how fast these particles are moving would determine how much is the electric current. So if they are moving very fast, electric current would be more. If they are moving very slow, the electric current would be less. So basically how fast or how slow the charges are flowing, that would determine how much is the electric current. So the unit to measure electric current is ampere which is normally denoted by capital A and that's how so we, we define the amount of current as 5 amperes, 10 amperes, 20 amperes and so on. So now when you look at this circuit where we see that there is a bulb which is tied to a battery, this is a battery or a cell and there is a switch. So let us say this is the switch. So this is how, now you might be amazed to look at this kind of a diagram, you might be thinking this doesn't look like a switch, but basically these are the ways to represent a switch or a battery or a cell. So this is how we represent them in an electric circuit. So we will learn about electric circuit a little later. Now as we switch it on, what happens the entire circuit is complete and as a result electric current flows through the circuit and when electric current flows through the circuit that this makes the bulb glow and that is why the bulb glows. Now let us try to understand this concept of charges flowing from one place to another by, by considering it as a very simple scenario. Now let us say these charges which are actually electrons, let us assume them as balls because electrons are anyways particles which are extremely tiny so they cannot be seen, forget about naked eye, they can only be seen with powerful electron microscopes. So let's say these are the balls and these balls are nothing but the electrons. Now, these balls as they move, so you see as the first ball moves, the second one also moves, third one moves, fourth one moves and so on. So this process of movement continues. So as the balls move, the rate of their movement, how fast they are moving, that determines the current. So the electrons are also like these balls. Now whenever these balls stop moving, the current in the circuit is zero because the the current is not determined by the presence of these balls. The current is determined by the movement of these balls. So as long as they are moving, there is a current flowing through the circuit. The moment they stop moving, there is no current flowing through the circuit. So that is the concept. So whenever we switch on, so what happens, all the balls in this circuit, they tend to move. But when the switch is open, in that case, the balls do not move. They become static and as a result, there is no current flowing through the circuit and therefore the bulb doesn't glow. So that is in very simple terms that is how the concept of electric current works. So now let us talk a bit more about electrons because electrons are like uh, they play the leading role in the concept of electric current. So before we talk about electrons let's see from where the concept of electrons come into picture. Now anything that we see around us, anything, whether it is the chair, it is the table, it is the cat, it is the, uh, the fire, windows, clock or whatever, whatever we see around us, what are they? They are nothing but matter. Whether it is living organism or it is a non-living organism, everything that we see around us is matter. So anything that we see around us is matter. So matter is something that occupies some space. 
For example, if you look at this chair, this chair occupies some space, even though the chair is a non-living object. Similarly, when you look at the cat, the cat also occupies some space and this is a living object. So all of these are examples of matter. Now, when you see what is matter made up of, we see that matter is made up of molecules. Now, let us take examples of some molecules. For example, let's say water. Water is a molecule. So one molecule of water, like several molecules of water might uh, result in a good amount of water. So basically, the molecule water is nothing but H2O. So here you can see this big ball is O and the smaller balls are the hydrogen, two hydrogen and one oxygen. So that's H2O. Similarly, you have different types of molecules. It may be methane, ethane, they are all molecules. Now, when you look at the composition of the molecules, you see that the molecules are made up of atom. So each molecule, so here you have, the, when you think of the water molecule, you see that the water molecule in turn are made up of atoms, that is hydrogen and oxygen. So these are the atoms of which the molecules are made up of. And finally, when you look at the composition of atom, you see that atom is made up of three types of particles. And those three types of particles are proton, neutron and electron. So these are the three types of particles which form atom. So when you look at the structure of atom, you see that there is a central core which can which is positively charged and this central core of the atom is called nucleus and nucleus contains two types of particles that is proton and neutron so protons are positively charged particles and neutrons are neutral therefore the net charge of the core or the net charge of the nucleus is positive whereas electrons are negatively charged particles and the electrons they revolve in this orbits so if you see the electrons are not present inside the nucleus, they are present outside the nucleus and they keep moving around the nucleus. The way different planets revolve around the sun, in a similar way here electrons revolve around the nucleus. So now here if you compare the three particles that is electron, proton and neutron. So out of these three only one is mobile, only one is capable of moving from one place to another and that is electron. As you can see here also the electron is moving around the nucleus and this movement of electrons result in electric current. So the concept of electric current is very similar to the concept of say water current. So when we talk about water current, it is nothing but the flow of water. So when water flows at a very high speed, the current that is generated is termed as water current. In a similar way, flow of electrons constitute the electric current. So this is where the electrons lie and this from this is where from which the electron have been picked. So we are now going to discuss something even more interesting. So we are going to talk about the direction of flow of electric current. So we saw that electric current is nothing but flow of electrons. Now the question is how do we know which is the uh, direction of electric current? Now you might think that that's going to be quite obvious, the direction in which the electrons are flowing, that should be the direction of electric current. But what happened was there, there happened some confusion with regards to the direction of electric current. Before the electrons were discovered, so, so that time, the scientists thought that the flow of charges which constitute current, those charges are not electrons but protons because that time electrons were not at all discovered. So nobody knew what are electrons. So they thought that since there are some charges flowing, so these charges could be protons. Now what are protons? I discussed in the previous slide, right? They are positively charged particles. So these scientists said that the direction of the electric current is going to be the direction of the flow of protons. But later when electrons were discovered it was found that it was not the protons but it were the electrons which constitute electric current. So basically now we have two different uh, 
you know like methods of uh, determining the direction of current so one direction which was the conventional method or the traditional method which people got used to since long time so that is why that that current is termed as conventional current so as per conventional current it it was assumed that protons are the uh, charges which constitute electron uh, which constitute electric current and therefore the direction of electric current would be from the positive terminal towards the negative terminal of the cell or the battery so basically when you look at a circuit so you will have a battery and if you ever observe closely you will be able to see a plus sign and a minus sign of the battery which denotes the positive and the negative terminal of the battery so now since we are saying that electric current is all about flow of protons so when we say that in the uh, in conventional current that means positively charged particles will come out from the positive end so that means the direction of conventional current should be from positive terminal towards negative terminal on the contrary when we talk about electronic current so here the direction of current would be just the opposite that is from negative terminal towards the positive terminal because in this case we are assuming that electrons are the carriers of current now if you ask about which one is correct so basically the later concept which came up that was correct because actually these are the electrons which constitute current and not protons but since the method of conventional current was being followed since long time therefore in order to avoid any confusion conventional current direction is followed so that is why whenever you will see that we draw a circuit when we have to mention that okay current flows through the circuit we will always show it flowing from the positive terminal towards the negative terminal so please understand this that that doesn't mean that protons are flowing basically electron basically current is the flow of electrons but just to follow the convention it is always said that the current flows from the positive terminal of the battery towards the negative terminal in a circuit so that is the confusion about the direction of electric current and that is why we have discussed this so basically electronic current means here electrons are constitute electric current that is electrons are the carriers and in conventional current it was assumed that protons are the one which flows and constitute electric current i hope you found the video useful if you have a feedback to share do let us know in the comment section If you really like the video what are you supposed to do you are definitely supposed to like as well as share the video i will meet you all very soon with a new video with a new topic till then take care bye bye